Today, we are going to be naming the ionic compound PbC2H3O22. Okay, so when you have three or more different elements for an ionic compound, in this case, we have four. We have lead, Pb, C for carbon, H for hydrogen, and O for oxygen. When you have three or more elements, you know that you're dealing with at least one polyatomic. So it's always easiest to find the polyatomic and then go from there. Now keep in mind that polyatomics are never on the periodic table. They always have to be memorized. So that's why I wrote down the polyatomic that we're going to be working with here. In this case, we see it as C2H3O2, but you can see the same polyatomic as CH3COO. This polyatomic called acetate always has a negative one charge. And here it is, C2H3O2 is acetate. The only other element that I see here is Pb, and that's the metal, right? Ionic compound, you got to have a metal, right? Or you got to have a metal and a polyatomic or two polyatomics, right? But the metal, Pb, it's down here, right? And this is a post-transitional metal because it's still to the left of the staircase. Everything to the left of the staircase except for hydrogen are metals. Now let's just start naming. The metal name always stays exactly the same. So PB, which was lead, that's just going to stay lead. And then this polyatomic, C2H3O2, that name stays the same. And that, that name of the polyatomic is acetate. So I'm just going to leave it as acetate. But now you just got to do a double check. Since this is a ionic compound, do I need a Roman numeral or not? You need a Roman numeral for transitional metals. Now, this is a trick, guys. Even though lead is not part of your transitional metals, it is classified as a post-transitional metals. It's after the transitional metal block. So this one, it can exist as multiple oxidation states, so we need to have a Roman numeral. So that's an exception. There's tons of them in chemistry. You're going to see it all throughout these videos. So we just need to find out the charge. The charge is always, or actually I'll say, the Roman numeral is always the charge of the metal. So how do we find the charge of the metal? Well, it's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to just take the subscripts of the metal and the polyatomic and crisscross them back up. There was one lead and there were two acetates. So this one crisscrossed up telling me that the acetate was a negative one. And this two crisscrossed up telling me that the lead was a plus two. Now you just got to do a check. Does this check out? Is the acetate always a negative one charge? Yes, it is. That's why you have to memorize your charges as well. So if this checks out, this has to check out. And the charge of the lead was a two. So that's what I'm going to put here, two. And now we are done. So Pb, C2H3O2, two, is just lead, two, acetate. And there you guys go. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you thought. All right, hopefully I'm giving you good help. And if you want, subscribe. That will help us out. Thank you so much for that, and I will see you in future lessons. All right, have an awesome day. Bye-bye.